Who are the Sharks? They're entrepreneurial leaders in the North Texas Conference churches with a passion for reaching new people for Christ. The Reverend Debbie Lyons serves as the senior pastor at First United Methodist Church, Winsboro. Her passion for community engagement has earned her the mayor's key to the city. Philip Neely, a lay member at Whaley United Methodist Church in Gainesville, has more than 20 years of experience in business development and currently serves as president and CEO of Trident Process Systems. The Reverend Sylvia Wang serves as the senior pastor at First United Methodist Church, Archer City. As chair of the conference's Journey Towards Racial Justice coordinating team, she helps develop strategies to create an equitable future for all people in the North Texas Conference. Greg Hickman, lay leader at Whitesboro United Methodist Church, is the owner and CEO of First Texas Home Health, a leading home health care system. The Reverend Dr. Andy Stoker is an interfaith leader who has served as a United Methodist pastor for more than 20 years. Today, he is Chief Engagement Officer at the Thanksgiving Foundation. Jessica Vargas, Mission Coordinator in the North Texas Conference Center for Church Development, supports leaders across the conference as they identify new ways to engage their communities for Christ. Michelle Wood and the Parrish Junior College Wesley Center are the first into the spark tank, asking for the shark support of Reflection Kayaks, a ministry that will help college students commune with God in nature. When you get out onto the calm waters and you're out there with the sun basking down on you and you hear all the nature around, and the, the wind rustling through the trees and everything is just so calming. And you're like, this is what life is meant to be. And you can just, you know, you can daydream, you can, you know, meditate, you know, you can just, you know, play your, in the water if you want to. And it just brings back a lot of kid-like quality also. So I think that's, you know, just being on that water just, you know, kind of brings back good feeling. Good morning, Sparks. Good morning. My name is Michelle Stubbs Wood, and this is Kodiak Stubbs Wood, and I'm the director of the Wesley Center at Paris Junior College. I'm here this morning seeking a grant for our startup, Reflection Kayaks. Last spring, one of the Wesley Center's college interns planned a kayaking retreat, and it was deeply impactful for those who were able to attend. The impact was so profound, I began thinking if there was a way that we create, could create a similar experience but not have to travel so far away, and that would open up this experience to a lot more people in Paris. That's where Reflection Kayaks came up with. Reflection Kayaks was bored. Our church services in North America today focus heavily on our cerebral and our intellectual selves while forgetting all of our fleshy bits. There are many ancient practices that engage different aspects of people in prayer, one of which is a walking labyrinth. In labyrinths, people put their whole selves on the path of God. They begin to physically embody the forward motion of their prayers. Today, I propose that kayaking can be used as an embodied prayer tool to meet people's spiritual needs in a new way. Kayaks physically transport us out of our day-to-day -day routines and provide space for deeper reflection. To mark the power of embodied prayer, I'd like to invite you into a space of embodied prayer with me. So we have bowls um, for each of the five sharks and there are some water and rocks and we would like to invite you into this time with us.
As I read this poem by Mary Oliver, I invite you to engage with the water in whatever way feels good for you, whether that's gazing upon it or tumbling rocks through your fingers. Mornings at Blackwater by Mary Oliver. For years every morning, I drank from Blackwater Pond. It was flavored with oak leaves and also, no doubt, the feet of ducks. And also, it assuaged me from the dry bowl of the very far past. What I want to say is that the past is the past and the present is what your life is. And you are capable of choosing what will be, darling citizen. So come to the pond or the river of your imagination or the harbor of your longing and put your lips to the world and live for life. Who among you wants to paddle away with reflection kayaks? <laughs> Thank you. The application was good. I think you had, did a good way. You did a good job communicating your goal to, to target students outside of the normal ones that participate in the Wesley Foundation there. Um, I, you know, I like how you based it on an experience you already did and had felt like you needed to take a next step and see how to expand it. Um, I think so. And then, I, you know, I'm, I love nature. I think that's very spiritual. I think it's a good way to to get out and interact with people, but also to interact with God. So I, 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 re, I relate to all that. I think the challenge to me or what I would like to hear is it's kind of like when you buy a, a bike or something and you use it for three months and it sits in the garage forever. So have you thought through how you how you keep your uh, progress going or your momentum going once you once you the newness wears off of, of your new kayaks? Right. Uh, so one of the interesting things about Harris is uh, in other cities, there are many, many different distractions, and we have fewer of those in Paris. And so I do think that this would be something that the college students would come back to. The annual uh, liability insurance for this ministry would be $4,800. And so with thinking through that and needing to also bring in additional income as well and donations, I also realized that there's a lot of people in Paris who could benefit from this ministry as well. Um, and college students could benefit from leading um, different meditative moments. And so I'd like to open up um, this experience to people outside of PJC as well, um, and yet keep it um, the student leaders at the focus of what we do, building up student, young, young adult student leaders in our programs. Um, and so a person could come in and experience this, yet also um, transition later if they felt comfortable into leading and facilitating these groups and creating that space for others, which would also build out leadership skills of our young adults. How would, uh, how would Reflection Kayak help a student or a community member grow in the way of Jesus um, through a pathway to discipleship. So with our students specifically, we are, um, we have a lot of de-churched um, students and unchurched students. We have students who are not interested at all in hearing the message of the Bible or spirituality. They are interested in finding community and um, building friendships, and they're interested in social justice and morality uh, and having conversations about life. This is a space that people could come and engage in discourse and dialogue um, and with that, grow and challenge and sharpen one another in what they've grown up hearing and what they feel the spirit um, moving within them. And um, beyond this space, I was thinking it would be nice to also have some uh, scriptural based groups. And so uh, having options that are open-ended for anyone to enter into and then spaces that also focus on scripture and um, 
stories of boats and walking on water and fear and waves um, and bringing those reflections and doing scriptural teachings in that way that introduces people to scripture maybe for the first time. Michelle, I love this. And I want to be the first, I guess, of the sharks to say, I want to invest in this and want to offer any help that I have. I'd like to invest $2,500 in it. I think this is something that is really, really important, especially for young people to connect deeply, not only to one another, but also to nature. What really compelled me about not only your paperwork, but also your presentation was this link with mindfulness. Uh, I finished a certification in uh, mindfulness meditation in the Western Buddhist tradition about two years ago. Wow. And so anytime we have any kind of embodied practice that we can introduce in something that is sporting is really helpful to, uh, for, for especially young adults to engage bodily and moving from head and heart into the fullness of who we are and experiencing their identities um, as confident and courageous people outside of the kayak. So, Michelle, I'd like to invest and offer any help I could, could get. Thank you. Thank you. I'll jump in on that too with $2,500. Uh, I've spent my entire life outdoors. Uh, I hunt, I fish, I, uh, you know, and I, I will tell you that kayaking is addicting. Uh, I have a kayak, uh, you know, and, and, and it is very addicting. The outdoors is addicting. Uh, and I think we spend way too much time indoors. Uh, very familiar with Paris Junior College. Uh, I'm familiar with Paris, and there's not a lot around. Right. A quick story on how kayaks can actually bring people together. So my oldest son uh, was working in, in Oklahoma City, and he was up there by himself because he was going to school at OU as well. And he bought a kayak and started fishing. And... He got his undergraduate at OSU, so all of his friends were there. Now he's in Norman, Moore area. Starts going out to this one lake. Uh, another guy starts showing up, about his age. And he, they show up the same time three or four times in a row, and this friendship kind of strikes up. They start fishing together. Friendship gets a little closer. Uh, they ended up being great friends. Cameron, my son's friend, introduced him to a young lady that three weeks ago, four weeks ago, my son Mary <laughs> and Cameron was in the wedding. I mean, and it just goes to show that, I mean, being outdoors, doing things that, that are not digital mm -hmm. technology. I would also encourage you when you get on that kayak, when you go on a retreat, you leave your phones at home, mm -hmm. you put them in the car. You don't have your eye watch. You don't, you just go out there and you spend time and what God gave us to really, for us to enjoy. Anyway, I, I think it's great. Uh, I think it's a great way to meet people. I think it's a great way to get to know people. Uh, maybe somebody that you're around every day, but you truly don't know who they are. And this is a good way to do it because there are no other distractions. So anyway, uh, I'm, I'm, I'll throw in 2,500, anything I can do to help. Thank you, uh, I appreciate that so much. You bet. Now I'll do 2,500 as well and tell them, mm -hmm. and I can maybe help you with the trailer as well. So uh, oh, that would be wonderful. How, so are you buying the kayaks? You, you, okay. We are searching for all new equipment. We're starting from ground zero at this stage. So any expertise that anyone here has in terms of purchasing kayaks or getting them wholesale or buying trailers, we could use any of that expertise that y'all have. Okay. Well, I think, first of all, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, putting the effort in, in that application and for this wonderful presentation. It was very interactive. And it just kind of gave us a glimpse of what you're trying to achieve. And as you can see, it worked. You got three amazing sharks. Um, you're you're, you're um, having a grant of 7,500 in total. So um, congratulations. And once again, thank you so much for having hey, Thank you. Thank you all. Good job, guys. Yeah, I'm so excited for all of these different partnerships and meeting new people here in the Spark Tank and excited to see the ways that we can continue to work together and bring forth the kingdom of God on earth. I think this is something that's going to um, rejuvenate a lot of people, especially after the pandemic. We've been shut in for so long, we've lost touch with the outside world. Next into the tank is Pastor Martha Hagen-Smith, 
whose sacred table ministry will combine worship, fellowship, prayer, and study with a farm-to-table experience for the community around Whaley United Methodist Church in Gainesville, Texas. Our church sits squarely in the middle of a neighborhood, about 400 homes, and we have a large population, about 6,000 people that work at Windstar World Casino. Um, many of those families, um, with the work that they do, they're not able to come and worship on Sunday morning. In addition, we have um, a large group in our community um, that are young, um, but they don't necessarily connect with a traditional uh, worship service, and so they're looking for something very different. Um, and so the farm to table experience with worship um, gives them that opportunity to be together as a family, um, it taps into what Whaley values as intergenerational ministry. Um, and so that was the spark that, um, that inspired what we were hoping to do with a sacred table. Um, I'm Pastor Martha Hagen-Smith. I'm fed at Whaley United Methodist Church. This is my third year there. We are reinventing who we are as a church family. Our new faces and spaces um, idea is an opportunity for us for evangelism and discipleship to happen as a part of a new worship experience around a farm to table and weekly dinner experience. Using our outdoor spaces, um, we sit squarely in the middle of a neighborhood. We have about 10 acres, a half mile prayer path that goes around it. I mean, it looks like a community park um, for the neighbors that are around us. And so the idea is that we'll have this worship um, opportunity outside Weather um, isn't so much a problem for us because we do have some ways that we can work around that, even with the patio space that we have. The only thing that would get us would be lightning um, or extreme heat. And so we might look at how we do that um, differently. But the sacred table, it claims our vision to spread Christ's love through service, our mission to make new disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of Gainesville, the surrounding community spreading Christ's love through service and our values as we will embody our values around the table each week with this new worship and discipleship opportunity. We believe that, that this opportunity will be a new way to connect with new people and then offer something very different for our community. Gainesville has a, has a unique um, a group of people, and some of them don't feel comfortable in traditional worship settings. And so this would provide that opportunity. In addition, we have about 6,000 people who are employed um, at Windstar World Casino, and most of those work on Sunday morning. Hmm. Again, it creates a space for them um, to be able to worship in a different way. Um, where they would not be able to do that as a family on Sunday morning. And so we are, we are, pro we are proposing this as a non-traditional um, worship space, looking for the modern, fresh expression. The sacred table, it will allow people of Whaley to do what they do best. They love to feed people, and they love to help create intentional intergenerational community outside regular Sunday morning experience. Offering community and grace around the table is a biblical, and it taps into what early Christians did best. We extend radical hospitality for all in breaking of bread together, muffins, cookies, um, and drinking. And so this allows us to do that for community. Whaley Church family, it has, a, has a, a really great gift for this hospitality, and we'll tap into that gift, inviting new people to come and worship, to sing, to eat, to pray, to have communion, and we'll also provide some take-home tools to help them grow in God's grace as a family together. The tools can be as simple as what we like to call Faith Five, reading scripture together. Asking simple questions like, how do you prepare during the season of Advent? What if we took time to pause at the table and watch for Jesus showing up in surprising places in a new way? Sharing highs and lows of life together. Or simply what resonated with you as the scripture was shared a few moments ago? And ending with prayer and blessing for those around the table. We are reclaiming our energy and our focus to reach people um, right in our own backyard, not only in that housing development that our church sits squarely in, but reaching out to those that, that wouldn't necessarily be able to worship in a traditional Sunday morning setting. We're going back to the basics, the table, grace, relationships, and joy in proclaiming the gospel. The sacred table um, opens the door to a modern, fresh expression of worship and discipleship using the free meal farm to table as the hook to draw people into something new and something different. I love your, your description of your new faces, new spaces ministry as the sacred table. Uh, I appreciate the intergenerational focus. So there's a couple questions that I thought of based on that, is that how will this new experience speak to newcomers 
and also people with perhaps no faith background, uh, as uh, the language that we, a lot of us in church are accustomed to, our uh, church language. And so, so, so that's kind of mingled in with my question is intergenerational. So the discipleship at the table, it's going to speak to a variety of people of different ages and perhaps a uh, faith journey background, maybe some without any kind of faith. And so could you speak a little bit more about your vision about how the sacred table uh, might be a, uh, an avenue to introduce people or reintroduce people to Jesus? So I think our hope for that is to keep it pretty simple, to ask basic questions in there and allowing people to um, respond to those questions around the table, as simple as what I asked a few minutes ago. You know, how do we prepare? Um, how do we prepare and have people share in that? Um, knowing that some people may have no faith background at all. Um, so they're going to talk about their experience of how they prepare in their way. Um, and then embracing that and speaking into that, I think, is important. Um, in the sharing around the table. Um, and so I would rely on my table guides for some of that to give the information back. Um, I've done a few of these to kind of experiment with how this could potentially work for us in our leadership. Um, and so we've used that information to kind of, it's like a holy huddle, they bring it back to me and say, okay, here's what was shared. Um, and then I try to address some of that um, in the wrapping up before we pray and, and then share a communion together. And um, so I would probably do that the same way. Um, the children that have experienced it, you know, they have profound responses to some of the questions, sometimes more so than the adults at the table. Um, and the adults learn just as much as the children do in the mix of all of that. That's, that's the beauty and the gift of intergenerational. Um, children can see things and you can see things very differently than what we do. So I think I would, I would use the model of keeping it really simple, asking just basic, um, basic questions and that. Also giving tools to dive deeper for those that need that. So um, always, I always give the hook at the end and um, closing that if you want to know more or you want to um, explore more about whatever it is we're doing, um, here's where you go to do that. Um, and I think that's important too for those that come from it from a very different perspective or background. That's how I see it. I think it'll grow and evolve um, as we see who's at the table. Yeah. I have no way to predict from week to week who might. That's great. Yeah. I appreciate your uh, very response to that. That's very thorough. But also, I, I uh, applaud your ability to adapt to the situation and to evaluate with your ministry leaders. That's yeah, awesome. I think that a powerful piece of the table is for us to also listen to each other. And so I would want if something came up at the mm -hmm. table that we needed to address, that we would be free enough to, sure. to speak into that. Thank you. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to address because that's my community, but I wanted to give you some feedback, uh, especially being from Gainesville. But so your, for, your application is very detailed and I appreciate that. I love your passion and without passion, failure is guaranteed. So I appreciate that. And to, to you know, kind of tag team with what Sylvia said, if you're trying to reach the um, unchurched people, uh, sacred table sounds a little bit holy to me. So, uh, but going along with that, are you saying that your volunteers, your table guides are gonna just sit and build relationships and just ask questions? They're gonna have specific questions that they're gonna ask, or is that gonna be a go with the flow? Cause you describe it as worship, mm -hmm. but I don't necessarily hear any worship. So we would start with music, you know, as a way to introduce in. Um, we would have some liturgy that we incorporate into that. Um, the way I did it in my kind of test and trying to figure out how we could make this work, um, we used uh, a candle lighting ritual at the table. So everybody had a candle, we lit the candle. We used some of the liturgy as an introduction to kind of what was to come. Um, we serve, they serve the meal. Um, and then from there, table leaders help with the discussion. So some of that is pre-planned, and then some of that also is free flowing and what comes out of that. So again, it's both and in um, the mix of all of that. Um, so I don't know that I fully answered your question because it, it does kind of grow and change, but there is a plan. Um, and the idea is to also take some of that and tie it back Sunday um, so that if they do come on Sunday morning, they begin to see connections back and forth so that we, we can interconnect all of that together. Why did you choose Thursday night? We have a developed worship, or a developed Wednesday night program that's around music. Um, and so for us, 
I would have to really adapt that Wednesday setting or look at another Bible option. Um, when I've done things on Thursday, um, we've had a pretty good attendance. Um, I also experimented with doing um, dining in the community. Um, and I, I chose Thursday for lack of a better thing. And but the last one that I did, I did eight of them where I showed up in the community to, um, to just eat for people to ask questions, um, ask anything that they wanted, faith, in, you know, whatever. Um, the last one I had, we, we had really good turnout on Thursdays. The last one I had, I had 52 people that showed up in the restaurant. Wow. To specifically just meet, dine, ask questions, discover kind of what, what we are. Martha, I'm really inspired by your connection to community, the communal nature of all of this. Uh, because I'm still recovering from many potlucks in my ministry, I'm going to go ahead and step away from anything involving food. That's all I'm at. I want to share with you that uh, I'm very touched by your intentionality to reach out to people who are not able to come to church on Sunday mornings due to work and other commitments. I think that's definitely a segment of uh, our communities that a lot of us do miss because we're so used to a traditional Sunday worship church format. And uh, also the farm to table concept is something very close to my heart just to share over food conversations. It's a great way to build relationships. and help people walk with them in their faith together to get to know Jesus. And so I am willing to invest $5,000 in your church's new ministry. I'd be happy to speak with you more about it. I, along with, if I would volunteer some time. I'd be happy to be your volunteer taste tester. <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem with that. Uh, anyway, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step away. I think it's a great idea. Uh, the form to table thing I think is great. And I do think that if we as a society need to get back to those dinner table discussions and, and, and talking about things that, that really matter uh, instead of running through McDonald's and instead of, you know, just it's, it's not the food, it's the conversation mm -hmm. that, that we really need as a, as a society. So it's a great idea. <clears throat> okay, well, you got one child who has experience in dinner uh, yeah. church. So I think this is amazing. We appreciate in the way that you're trying to reach the community um, through food and prayer and connection. Um, and we'll thank you that you are you. Um, here today and we look forward to see all the fruit of your labor. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. It's great. Um, I know that she's had a success with her own experience um, doing ministry very similar to that with worship um, in a restaurant. And uh, so her expertise and advice um, will come in handy. Um, we don't have a, a lot of resources to be able to uh, do ministry. Most of our resources are used for infrastructure of the, the building and facilities. And so this gives us seed money for that. Um, we need to uh, hire someone to help with leading worship um, for this particular uh, ministry, in addition to um, those that might help us with the, the cooking and um, other things that like providing the tools um, for the table um, for the worship experience itself. So 